Good afternoon. I hope you're still awake. Nice image there. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was talking to, a, to an artist. We were standing by the pond, and just above the tree line, we saw a huge tower made of concrete. Now, the artist was f for the first time in Finland, and she was from South America. She looked at the tower and asked me, what is that? And I told her proudly that young men climb up there, put their skis on, go fast down and jump 100 meters from them. She turned to me and asked, why? <laughs> That's a good question. I had a question when I was in Provence. I saw very beautiful white horses. No people around, but the sign says, we speak English. I had to ask who is speaking English here, but th I didn't, couldn't get any answer. <laughs> so they were nice horses. Now, the social networks, I'm talking here, is, is, it's like um, a concept of nature. We are in the nature, and the nature is in us. It, it's not just that we are looking or, or gazing at the nature or standing in front of nature. We are in the nature. We are in the networks. Smaller or bigger one, bigger networks. And, and nowadays, more and more, the networks are visual. They are informal. They are for entertainment. And we have the formal network, which is our school system. But I'm not talking about going into that. This visual network is cultural and contextual. Cultural here means that uh, the lady from South America really couldn't understand what he was looking at, what she was looking at. She didn't understand. I had to explain it to her. And I guess if I, go to, if I were to go to South America, there are a lot of things that I wouldn't understand unless somebody tells me what I'm actually seeing. We can look at things, but not really seeing them. We have to understand them. So, and, and we, we are seeing and understanding different kind of visual objects, not just two-dimensional, like photographs or paintings or drawings. Every, visual ob every object is actually visual and belongs to a visual network. And it's contextual. It depends, uh, our understanding depends on where am I seeing this? What is the context? What are the images made for? Or with whom I am seeing the images? It's contextual. Visual is verbal. I had to explain by words to the lady what we were looking at. We are actually, we are not naming things all the time. We are going or crisscrossing the whole network. That would be unbearable if you should name everything you see. And why is that? We don't give names then, because we, ha we have schemes in our head. We already know what we are looking at. We don't have to give names. But whenever we see something that is unfamiliar for us, then we have to ask, what is this? And then comes the words. Always. There are there's no such things as an innocent eye. There's no such things as straight perception. There's always words. There's always your culture. There's always the context. And it, it goes other way around too. Verbal is visual. If you open a book, and I hope that some of you still do open a book, what you see, you see letters, See fonts, letters, words, sentences, chapters, titles, subtitles, and so on. And that's visual. And also the feeling gives you some visual, not just information, emotion. And depending on that emotion, you decide if you continue the reading the book or not. You throw it away. Verbal is visual. So... Every now and then I heard, I really don't know what to say about images. 
okay, we are living in the, this global image network, visual networks, but uh, I really don't know how to cope with them. I can't say anything. But I say to them, of course you can. Everybody can say something. It's not a big deal. And I show you how we can say something about whatever image we are meeting. We can interpret the images here in three different levels. First, we can focus or bring in the focus the surface of the image. We can start talking about the light, space, illusion, time, the overall composition, the design of the, the image. So it's kind of a technical talk. You still have something. Uh, you you still have something to, to know about these techniques. You know what this means that somebody is looking at you, or, or if you're looking downwards or upwards. These are in your culture already. You know them. But the more important important surface is this focusing in front of the image. This is easy. You just think, what I feel about this image. Does it bring any memories to me? Do I have some same kind of experiences than this, this one? What is my emotion towards this image? So you are kind of a talking about yourself when you're talking about the image here. The third one is um, you can focus behind the image. That means that the, this image you're looking at would bring, arouse actually, arouse larger social or psychological, political, even economical issues. So you can start talking about what do you feel about kindergartens, childcare nowadays, and so on. The bigger issues than just in, in this, than just, a, just an image here. So we have three levers and you can like shift through all these at the same time or, or you can change your point of view. You can start how you feel, how I feel this. Oh, this is nice. If, if it's nice, then you can go on and start talking about this reminds me of the situation in Finland and so on. It's like crisscrossing the surfaces here. Now, what's common between these three surfaces here, or levels, should I say? One common thing is here. What you really see in the image actually is not there. What you see in the image, it's not in the image. Where is it? It's in your head. It's in your imagination. A image, an image, a visual image in these networks. The images are like dumb witnesses. They are mute, wordless, dumb. They won't speak anything to you. You are the one who is looking at the image, and you are the one who is speaking and using your ima imagination. So, what is not there, it's in your head, it's your feelings in your and emotions. It's in your head. Please use it. Thank you.